And where are your pants? Okay, run this by me one more time. Well, it's pretty easy, dude. I'm gonna throw the shield, it's gonna bounce all around the room, and then I'm gonna catch it. And you expect this to work? Hmm. I feel like you want me to say yes. Let's just do it. One, two, three. It worked. Are you kidding me? That almost. Ooh, sorry, dude. It slipped. Hey guys, welcome to Film Learning, the show that I can to learn you some filmmaking and learn you good. And that's right, it's one of those effects that has been requested and requested and requested, and then it's been requested again and probably request it again after that. Today we are doing the Captain America shield effect from, I'm not even gonna bother. There's just a lot of movies where he throws that damn shield. Now guys, in this effect, we are doing a full 3D shield. So you know what that means. This one's gonna be a longer tutorial. So in order to complete this effect, you just need to have your actor pretend to throw a shield and pretend to catch a shield. Now, if any of you out there have a practical Captain America shield that doesn't look like a piece of crap, I would totally recommend using that. But if you don't have that, don't worry. It's not a big deal. I didn't have one, so you can do it. You'll also need to head to filmlinen.com slash downloads and grab the Captain America download pack, which contains the shield, a project file for Cinema 4D, and also some bitchin' sound effects. You didn't think I was going to leave out the sound effects, did you? Well, I didn't. Now since this is a long one, I'm gonna shut up and let's get to work, shall we? Okay guys, here we are in After Effects and I've got my shield throw shot all set up and ready to go. So you can see I fake throw the shield, pretend it bounces around the room, all around behind me and BAM! I pretend to catch said shield and it's back on my arm again. So how do we do this? Well firstly I'll let you know that the shield in my final shot is actually two separate shields. The one I throw is one shield, and the one I catch is another shield. So the moment it goes off screen here, that's the end of the first animation, and when it comes back on screen and I catch it, that's the second animation. Now, why would we need to do that? Well, it's pretty simple. The shield that I throw is all completely hand animated or keyframe animated, and the shield catch is motion tracked to my forearm. That way we get all the subtle movements of my wrist and forearm as it moves down and back up again. So let's get into it. So the first step here is to render out a PNG sequence that we can import into Cinema 4D for reference. So let's head up, add it to the render queue, like so. We can then move all the way down, click on lossless, and from the drop down menu, we're gonna select PNG sequence and let's hit render. Okay, that's done. Our next step here is to move along the timeline until the point where I'm just about to catch the shield. This looks good right here. Let's then hit Control shift d and split the clip. We'll then right click, pre-compose this, moving all attributes into the new composition and click OK. From there, we're gonna track the catching arm. Let's head up to Effect, Boris FX, grab Mocha AE, click on the logo and we'll launch Mocha. Now in Mocha, we wanna head to our last frame right here mainly because there's some motion blur at the start. We want a nice crisp image to start our track. So we're at the end. Let's then head up, grab the X-Blind tool. Let's draw a rough mask around my forearm like so. We'll then head down, set the percentage to 90%. We'll then turn off everything except for transform. This way we only get the positional information. Now let's hit the track button and track backwards. Okay. Track is done, and I'm just going to adjust a couple of frames here as the motion blur of my arm has made the track veer off a little here. Now the reason we want just the positional information is that Mocha is a 2D planar tracker. So if we move toward the camera in the shot, it'll scale up our 3D model instead of moving forward in Z space, which looks super weird if you've ever actually tried it. So by only grabbing the positional information, we are free to add those adjustments ourselves in Cinema 4D while being able to avoid tedious amounts of frame by frame animation by tracking the arm. Now, some of you might say, why not just track the arm in Cinema 4D? Well, you can. 
But not everyone has the full version of Cinema 4D, and I try to make these tutorials as accessible as I can. Okay, adjustments are made. Let's save that and head back to After Effects. Okay, back in After Effects, we need to set up our tracking to send to Cinema 4D. So let's get started. Firstly, we're gonna head up, grab a new null object, and from there, we're gonna click our newly tracked footage, click Create Track Data, we'll then select our track right here. Let's then head down, set our export to transform, set our layer to the null object and hit apply. Okay, our tracking is now in place. Next, we need to make this object 3D. Done. Finally, we'll add a camera to the shot like so and hit okay. Done. Our shot is now ready to send to Cinema 4D. Now the null object isn't really 3D, but by making it a 3D object, Cinema 4D thinks it is. So let's head to File, Export, and select Cinema 4D. We'll then save that to wherever you want. And just ignore that 2D warning. Next step, over to Cinema 4D. Okay, we're inside Cinema 4D and I've opened up my Captain America shield model. Now gang, our first shot is gonna be the throw and then we'll work on the catch, okay? So let's import our background. Now in the project file that I've left in the download folder, you'll notice a material called background just down here. At the moment, that is set to me throwing the shield. So I'm gonna show you how to replace that with your own very quick. We're gonna double click to open it, head to color and load image. Grab your PNG sequence you exported out of After Effects and then we're just gonna click on that, head to animation and hit calculate. You'll now be able to see your footage play in real time inside cinema, which will be handy since, you know, we need that. <laughs> okay, on the first frame, let's position our shield into place using the axis, scale, and rotation controls. Now, take your time here, gang. There's no rush. Unlike me, who's I'm kinda on the clock here. So, when you're happy, hit this button to record a keyframe. Now, from there, it's just a matter of following your hand movements and adjusting the shield with those same controls. You can interpret this however you like. Add a keyframe each time you move your head. Keep going until your shield is off screen and out of your hand completely. It's important to note that you really can use some creative license here as to how the shield moves. So this is what I've got so far. And pretty easy so far, right? You can see if I move frame by frame, I've just sort of adjusted the rotation of the shield a little bit each time. Like I said, creative license. So my next cue in this shot is when I look over to the door. So that's how I know that my shield has to hit there at that exact moment. So our next step here is to animate the shield bouncing off that wall. So what I'm gonna do here is change into multi-view mode by clicking this button here. Being in this multi-view mode is going to really help define the path your shield takes a lot better. So firstly, I'm gonna move the shield over here, lining up a straight line to the door, and I'll add a keyframe. Next, I'm going to drag it over here, keeping an eye on my perspective mode here until it's in the correct position. looks pretty good. I can then add another keyframe, adjust it a little more and overwrite that keyframe by just clicking the button again when I'm happy with it. If we scrub forward and back, this looks pretty good. I turn my head and there's the shield. Now just be aware guys, this is gonna take some time and patience to figure out. Once you've got those base keyframes in place, you are gonna find that you're going to have to adjust and then adjust again and maybe even adjust again, just to get that timing right and just get it looking right. I'm banging through this very, very quickly, but in reality, when I did my final shot, this took me a lot longer to do. Now, say your animation's a little bit too fast or slow, what you can actually do is grab one of your keyframes, just like this, and you can move it back or forward to either slow down or speed up the animation. And next step is to animate the shield, changing trajectory, as it bounces off that wall. So I'm gonna skip ahead a few frames like so, and I'm gonna drag it fully off screen in the top down view mode here. I'm gonna move it a little bit forward as well. And of course, I'm gonna add a new keyframe when I'm happy. 
Now at this moment, you can see the arc of the throw, it's all curvy and weird. And that's because by default, our keyframes are set to spline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this particular keyframe that is the door, this one here, and I'm gonna change that over to a linear keyframe. And you can see now that it has a direct straight line now. It just bounces and pound straight off. So let's now check out a preview of the animation. Nice, it flies out of my hand, bounces off the door and behind my head and off screen. Now that the animation's done, we can concentrate on the lighting of this scene. Now guys, I added lights in roughly the same spots as I had them when I shot this. I also added a sphere with my old HDRI of the studio that I shot on my phone to give the shield something to reflect and also aid in lighting. I talk about this a lot more in the episodes in the card above, so feel free to check those out. Now we can now save this and call it say, Shield 1. And if you're in the full version of Cinema 4D, I highly recommend you render this out. If you're not, head back to After Effects and render it out. Now guys, I cover rendering Cinema 4D project files in After Effects in the episode that's up in the card above. And I'll also go over some specific render settings that I use later on. Now gang, onto the catch. For this, we'll open up the Cinema 4D file we exported from After Effects. Now, you won't see much at first, but if I hit play, you'll see a little dot moving around, which of course is our null object. Let's bring in our shield model, and I'm gonna skip ahead until after I've imported our background file in again. Done. So we've got our shield in, and all we wanna do is drop down this hierarchy until we find our null object. And we're gonna drop our shield into that null object. We can see that our shield is moving along with our actor's arm now. It looks terrible, but it's working. Now the beauty of it doing it this way is that we're not limited by the movement of our arm. We can still fully animate our shield in 3D space and retain that arm motion because it's a child of the null object. So let's head to the first frame of our catch animation right here. Now guys, you probably can see that there's a whole bunch of just dead space and that's just the part of the throw that we've already animated. So feel free to just ignore that. We'll deal with that in a sec. We'll just concentrate on the catch animation right here, which is super easy. All we need to do is just go over here, click on a null object, and we'll see all our keyframe animation that we've brought in. So once we've seen that, we'll just skip ahead, say a few frames right about here. And then we're just gonna click on this box right here and type in the frame number that I can see right here. All that's gonna do is just cut out that first chunk because we don't need it. Now from there, let's adjust this shield into place like so. That looks pretty good. And then we'll hit the keyframe button. We can then follow that by scrubbing through and just adjusting the shield wherever you like. If you feel like adding a little bit of movement, a little bit of rotation, whatnot, this really is totally up to you guys. I just found that by adding little rotations and slight movements here and there, that it made it look a lot more natural and sold the idea that the shield was actually there. Now, there is one thing that is missing. The shield still has to fly into the shot. So let's do that. We'll head to the frame just before our keyframes start. Now from there, we can move the shield into place. About here is good. And you guessed it, we're going to keyframe animate the catch just like our throw. So we're just gonna go back frame by frame once again until the shield is completely off screen. Now, let's have a look at that. Not bad. Now you can see on this frame, I've still had the shield almost going on past my actor. And then on the next frame, it violently shifts down before settling into our tracking animation. The idea is that I wanted to convey that my actor is essentially stopping the shield in midair. So it would still have momentum. And just like when you hit the brakes on a car, you get a sudden balance shift. Okay, well, I'm happy with that, so time to render this thing out as well. Now, firstly, let's turn the background off like this. We'll just head up. We'll then head to render settings. We're going to add ambient occlusion. I'm then going to head to anti-aliasing and set it to best. I'm then going to head to save and designate a save location. Making sure I turn alpha channel on. And finally, hit render. Now, for those of you using Cinema 4D Lite, Feel free to ignore this hit render part, but 
do set up your render settings, hit save, and then we're all gonna head back to After Effects. Back in After Effects, I've got my two rendered shield files. So I'm gonna drop those both on top of my active footage, like so. Now, before I make any adjustments, I'm just going to grab them both and pre-compose them. That way, I only have to add effects to one layer. And that first effect is motion blur. Now guys, I'm gonna use real smart motion blur because it's awesome. But if you don't have that, feel free to use either pixel motion blur or CC force motion blur. Next up, we need to add a shadow to the shot. Now in my shot, I used VFX shadow from Red Giant's new VFX suite. But if you don't have that, I highly recommend doing this. Duplicate your layer, add an instance of drop shadow to the bottom layer, and then check on shadow only. Add a keyframe and just animate that shadow's perspective, distance, and softness throughout your shot as that shadow is going to shift as the shield moves around the room. After that, we just need to color correct the shield to match our footage as best we can. Now, gang, I've done this countless times on Film Linen, so all I'm gonna do is just show my color correction, and I'm gonna turn it on and off to show you the difference. Just adjust the color until you're happy. Now, the last thing I did is add a little camera lens blur to the shot, just to soften the shield up a little. Like, really small, like less than one. It might seem like a small amount, but it does actually make the shield look less sharp. And personally, I think it helps. Oh, and one other thing before I go. Now, you might have noticed that my shield goes behind my head. So, how do we do that? Well, it's actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. All we're gonna do is just duplicate our active footage, bring that up above everything, and then we're gonna trim it to just those two frames where the shield passes behind the actor's head. There we go. Now, from there, we're gonna head up, grab the pen tool, and draw a rough mask around the shape of their head. Now, you don't have to get crazy detailed with this, just do a rough mask around where the shield interacts with the head. We'll then hit MM to collapse down the mask settings, and then all we're gonna do is hit the stopwatch on mask path, head to the next frame, and just adjust that mask so it fits the head one more time. And done. The other little cherry on top that I added was just some damage to the wall that sells the idea that the shield is bouncing off the wall. Now to do that was very, very simple. All I did was add a bullet wall hit effect from Action VFX, and I also grabbed one of their shotgun wall damage stills and just placed that underneath the wall hit effect. So that way, when the shield hits, it reveals the wall damage. Pretty easy, huh? Now guys, on top of all this, I did as always pre-compose the entire thing and add a bit of camera shake via Red Giant Universe's camera shake plugin. But whether you do that or not, it's totally up to you. I just feel like it enhanced the shot, even though it doesn't add anything to the effect at all. But for now guys, that is another effect. Mm, done. Out of all those steps, you get something like this. One, two, three. It worked. So guys, that is my take on the Captain America shield throw effect from all those Marvel movies. As you can see, while it does take quite a few steps, it's really not that hard to pull off. I mean, I know I feel like I say that a lot, but in this case, it's true. And I just wanted to also point out that any of the shots where I'm just talking to Doug and I'm holding the shield, I'm tracking it the exact same way that I did the catch. Tracking it in Mocha, putting it onto a null object, exporting it to Cinema 4D, and just placing the shield model into that null object. And also doing a little bit of keyframe animation. Okay. But for now guys, that's all I got for you. This is one of our longer episodes, so I think I'll just put a cap on it for now. We do have some more stuff coming up, as always. I mean, it's a weekly show. That's what we do. So, if you did enjoy this episode, please smash that like button. I really do appreciate it, and it does help out. And hey, if you are new here, welcome, and maybe hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss a single film learning episode. I've got two other episodes right over here that are Marvel related, and I've also got all my social media crap right here, as well as the Patreon there if you want to help support Film Learning. Or if you want to support us directly on YouTube, you can click that Join button below. But until I see you again, guys, keep learning!